So what? So what? Guys, sometimes as believers, we have to have that mindset of so what? So what if we're not invited to everything? So what if they appear to be in the know and in the circle? So what if it feels as if this church is growing faster because of all the people that they know and who they know? So what? You know, are you going to look and say, well, my church is small and, and my group is small and my channel is small and my channel is not growing because, and look at how this other person's channel is growing. One of the things you have to realize is every one of us, we have, God gives us a certain amount of things to do at a specific time. Remember when Jesus gave the parable of the master who had given his servants certain talents to one he gave one to another he gave three to another he gave five each of them if i'm correct except for the one with the one talent the one who had three he doubled it the one who had five he put his talents to work and then increased and had more and then the one who had one child one talent he hid his talent. He never did what his master required of him. And he had a bunch of excuses when the Lord comes back. I say all that to say you cannot compare yourself. You know, it may be God's will for someone to have a certain amount of subscribers. They person may have a hundred. You may have two. You may have three. But are you being faithful? You may just have 40 and someone has 4,000. But are you look? why you, would you be looking at that person? This person may have a huge church and this person may be following the Lord, right? And they have a, um, they have a big church at the moment. Well, not, not say huge because I really have this thing about really, really huge churches. But nevertheless, to God be the glory, right? So let's say this person has a big church and then you have a smaller church. So you're looking at yourself like, oh, there must be something I'm doing wrong because, oh, I should have no. This is your lot. This is what God has given to you. This is what God has given to you. And you have to be faithful in that. And you have to have like, so what? So what? Not in it as in, I don't care, but so what? You know, this is what God has given to me. This is what I need to do. So what if somebody else is growing in this area? So what if somebody else is doing this? That's them. That's nothing to do with me. This is what God has given me to do. And then guys, there's another so what that you have to have. So what if you're not invited? If you're not invited and they do things to snub you, why would you want to be in that circle? Why would you want to be in that circle? The word of God says, can two, two walk together unless they agree? So a lot of times when, you, when a person is nasty and they are rude and they're vindictive and then you find them just hanging thick as thieves with other people, it's because they're alike. They're alike in spirit. They are similar or that person, they may be a person in the group, they're not similar, but they have just resolved to just hang with them no matter what at all costs. They just keep their mouth shut. They're miserable on the inside. They overlook whatever the person's doing because they just want to be friends with them. And truly, that's no way to be. You know, I remember seeing this person and this individual has always just had this strange, weird personality just wishy-washy one day up and another day they're not and just really just downright rude this person was rude this person was sometimey this person was just flaky they was just like it was just really difficult to have a friendship with this person because they were just weird I mean that's the only way to put it and really it's a spirit because God doesn't have us up, down, this way. Today they want to talk to you. Tomorrow they're not going to talk to you. Uh -uh, uh -uh. They got issues. And a lot of times what happened to these individuals, which I'm going to talk about in another video, is that there are things that goes on with them, but they do not allow the Lord. They do not obey God and allow the Lord to heal them. So they just become this, you don't know what you're going to get with this person. I forgot what food it is to say you know, like, oh, Forrest Gump. Life is like a box of chocolates. You never know what you're going to get. That's how they are. You know, I remember my mom would buy these chocolates and it was in this big old container. And when I got older, I bought myself one. And it, they all look like chocolate. 
except for a few you can tell the ones that have like nuts in it because of how you you will see it right but the other ones they'll just look smooth you don't know what you're gonna get your body into it it might it might be caramel you bite into another one it might be coconut you bite into another one it could be peppermint into one it could be some sort of cream in it right you just don't know and based on when you taste it you know if you're going to enjoy it or if you're going to put it to the side most of which i always put to the side because my palate is just kind of plain okay when it comes to certain type of chocolates it's going to be the filling can really just between coconut and caramel that's pretty much the type of fillings i can handle anything else if they have marshmallows in the middle and all that type of stuff i'm just kind of like, ugh, right so that's what these individuals are like but that's because they are operating in a spirit that is not they are not at peace. Like this person is probably tormented in their own minds. They're miserable. They are not at rest. So therefore, if you're going to be in a friendship with them, you're not going to be at rest either because they can wake up and you don't know which spirit is going to be front and center today. And those type of individuals, you got to leave them alone. Otherwise, you end up acting nutty and crazy trying to keep up with, you don't know who's coming forward today. You don't know if the spirit if, if the spirit's going to be Cain, you don't know if the next day they're going to be nice. You The next one, you don't know who's coming for. You don't know if Absalom's going to manifest today. And so then they're nice again. Then you don't know if Jezebel's going to manifest today. And then they're nice another day. And then who else? Oh, you know, Aiken might show up today. You don't know who's going to be there. You just don't know. And that's not, that's not normal. And when you try to keep up with an abnormal person who are who's driven by evil spirits and by their own like mind that's always never at peace and always thinking you're going to end up acting loony that's why you leave them alone so guys so what and sometimes individuals like this they'll do that they'll they always have to have like some people around them they may miss they may really mistreat you and do some things to you that's wrong but then they're kind of nice to some other people, but they're the same. And sometimes they're not the same, but they haven't shown them who they are yet. They still behave in that nice way that they did when you two became friends. So they're showing a facade right now. And sometimes people that are this way, that are nasty, they have a moment where they have to sort of tell themselves that they're nice. So what they do is they will switch and start to be nice, but they're not really nice. They're just doing that for a while for affirmation to say, oh, I'm not such a bad person. But eventually somebody is going to surface, whether that is Freddy Krueger going to manifest today, whether it is Damien from The Omen going to show up today, or whether it's Michael Myers. It, they, they just can't stay. You, a person who is whose foundation is not on the rock they're going to be they build on sand so that means they're not stable and so they're just going to show up they're just going to show out show up at some point show out show up and show out at some point that's how they are sometimes what will happen is if you're not careful you look and see everybody else around them and you'd be like oh you know maybe uh-uh not necessarily now if you know you've done some things that's not right and um things of that nature then yes you have to do a self-reflection and look at yourself but if you know you've been kind to this person you've been accommodating to them you've been forgiving to them you've tried to understand them and the person continues to behave in this manner that is who they are don't allow yourself to be fooled into oh maybe no that is a manipulating spirit that is a Jezebel spirit do not allow yourself to fall to that because these people what they do is they continue to do their passive aggressive or you know covert behaviors or overt behaviors or aggressive whatever they do but the bottom line is that you're going to come around and be like oh well you know I'm so sorry I shouldn't have done that so now you're going to be in their you know the little circus that they've created for themselves keep your eyes on the word of God Keep your eyes looking up to Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Keep believing his word. 
When people reject you and they don't want to be around you, so what? So what? This is a time of sub. This is a time of se uh, separation. He's pulling the wheat away from the tares. He's going to separate you from certain people because they've been sinning for so long. Ain't nothing left but the judgment of God. And you can't hang around that person. You don't want to be in the place in the building where everything comes crashing down. I always give the example of Samson. You know, everybody that died in that Colosseum, they didn't poke his eyes out, but they went to the place where things were going down. And God is bringing judgment to a lot of people. And God is going to separate you from them. God is going to separate you from them. You don't want to be in that place. And then to others, the things that you are doing, the things that God has given you to do, whether it's a ministry, whether it's a channel, whether it's a building, whether it's a setting, you focus on what God has given you to do. Don't look over at what other people are doing. How would the person who had one talent would probably feel some type of way, right? Like, oh, you just gave me one and this person has five. Well, you know what? I only have one. It doesn't matter. But obviously it did matter, right? Because the Lord acts the... We know ultimately that parable about the master that went away and gave the servants different talent. That's about the Lord. But that master came back and asked him, what did you do with the one talent? Because it mattered. So it doesn't matter if do not focus on how small your channel is, how small your prayer group is, how small your Bible study is, or who doesn't show up. You may have just one person, but it does not matter. You need to still approach it as if you had a million people. Because what the Lord is looking at, no matter what, is our stewardship. Our stewardship. I have seen channels that they have just 40 videos and they have 66,000 subscribers. Right? I'm not sure how many videos I have, but I know I have over a thousand, over at least over 1,600 videos now. I have 2,000, right? So people can look at that and go, oh, you got all them videos and that's all you have and this person only did. I've seen some people, they only have like four videos up and they have like tons of people, but that's their lot. That's what they're supposed to do. And some of these individuals are believers. That's their lot. You're not doing anything wrong this is what God has told you to do, and that's what you do. And at the same time, don't look at somebody else's view. Oh, I need to, I need to catch up. It's not a competition. Otherwise, what's gonna happen is you're gonna start doing things on your own. You're gonna be uploading stuff and just making stuff up. And then what you're gonna find, you're gonna draw a carnal audience. And you're not gonna be saying what God says. There's a lot of prophets, people who say that they're prophets and they're just stealing one another's, going over and stealing words and, and doing stuff like that and caveating on somebody else because, oh, this person have, is putting out several prophetic words. But you can't just go and accost somebody else's word. So what? That's what they're supposed to do. So what? That's how many followers they're supposed to have right now. And then there are other people, they have that type of stuff. They have a large following because they're always, they say what people want to hear. Not all the time now. As I said, there are some people who truly found the Lord. They just have a higher group, uh, subscription than you. But you need to focus on what you're, you need to hire subscribers. So you need to just focus on what God is giving you to do. Because as the parable stated, the master came back and then say, oh, you only have one. All right, no problem. He asked him about it. So be faithful over the little bit that you have. Because if numbers matters, if numbers matter to you, if you're thinking, oh, I only have 40 people, so it doesn't matter to you, then that's an insult to God, right? And then also it means numbers matter. So it's going to be like when David, instead of just trusting God, he wanted to go count his armies and there were consequences for it. So that's kind of what ends up happening to people. If you count what you have and not just do the work of God and trust him to provide and to add as he sees fit, then as David did counting and paying attention, you'll be a person, you'll be, you would be paying attention to your numbers. That's why there are people 
they're ashamed of their sub counts, some, okay? And they will hide it. But as soon as they hit a thousand, they'll show it. And that's not good. It's not good. Because now they feel like, oh, I have a thousand, so I'm relevant. They're getting into that trap that happens to many people who say that they're about the gospel. You're either from the very beginning like, hey, I don't want to see my count. And so even if you have 4,000, 5,000, you still leave it. Like, I don't want to look at my counts. There are people that will do that. And then there are those like me. My count was always low for a long time, a long time. But I was not about, I, and, and I was making a lot of videos that, you know, the Lord started giving me more and more information. And I'm like, okay, I have like 50 or 60 videos, you know, out there. But I only had two people for a long, long time. A long time. Before I hit a hundred subscribers, it, it was like a long time. I know it had to have been over three or four months for a long time, but I wasn't about that. I uploaded what the Lord told me to upload and that was it. And I left it alone because who God's going to bring to your channel, who's God, God is going to bring to your church, who God is going to bring to your group. No one's going to be able to stop that. And sometimes you're going to be over a lot and sometimes you're going to be a steward over a little but even that little, God is paying attention to it. It holds a relevance. So I'm saying today, so what? So what? I'm not telling you not to care. I'm not telling you to be, you know, just indifferent. So what? As in, don't let that stop you. So what? Someone has a higher count of a bigger church. So what? That's not going to stop you. You're going to trust God. So what? Everybody's meeting over here, not inviting you. Don't let that stop you. Don't let that discourage you. Trust God. All right, guys.